This is the Deseret News National Edition, when your family needs to know more. And good morning. Welcome to the Deseret News National Edition. I'm Dave McCann. A Supreme Court ruling in favor of Hobby Lobby this past week sparked strong reactions on both sides of the case, but it's not ending the ongoing battle over religious freedom and the Affordable Care Act. Critics of the ruling claim the majority opinions by Justices Samuel A. Alito Jr. and Anthony Kennedy could pose problems for the more than 50 nonprofits also suing the government, claiming the Affordable Care Act's contraceptive mandate violates their rights under Religious Freedom Restoration Act, or RIFA. Desert News reporter Mark Kellner joins us from Washington, D.C., been watching and covering this story closely. Let's start with the Supreme Court ruling. What kind of precedent did that set? Well, it set several precedents. One is that it extended the uh, protections of RIFRA, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, to closely held corporations. In other words, companies where the stock, the majority of the stock, is owned by five or fewer people. And that means that a corporation of that kind is essentially a person under RIFRA, just like you or I might be. Now, this, this Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty argued the case for Hobby Lobby. You wrote a piece about the law firm. It's a pretty small law firm. How big of a win is this for them? This is huge for them. It easily is their top win now, uh, or certainly tied with their 2012 victory in the Hosanna Tabor case, which involved uh, ministerial employment at an evangelical Lutheran church and how they treat their employees. So this is uh, clearly their most impressive win so far. Now, Mark, some of these uh, nonprofits suing the government might look at this ruling and go, great, we're all going to win our cases. Does that, uh, are they wrong in assuming that? Well, it doesn't necessarily follow. Uh, it depends on how accommodating the government is and how willing the nonprofits are to bend. In the case of the Little Sisters of the Poor, a Roman Catholic order, the concern has been that the Roman Catholics would have to authorize their insurance company to pay for contraceptives, which they, the Roman Catholic nuns, don't believe in as a matter of principle. It'll be very interesting to see where we go from here. Mark, continue your holiday. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. You can read more about the Hobby Lobby decision and other cases involving the ACA's contraceptive mandate online at national.deseretnews.com. For many of us, keeping perspective this holiday weekend can be a challenge with all the parties, fireworks, and barbecues, but not for those who've served the country. Sam Penrod visited with World War II veteran and LDS Church Apostle L. Tom Perry about why he believes freedom is not a spectator sport and we all need to take an active role in protecting it. As you take a seat in the office of Elder L. Tom Perry, you can feel the love he has for his country. Everyone that comes in has to hear my lecture on how I love the flag and why these two stand for something very special to me on the land of America. Two jars that always sit on his desk, a reminder of his service as a Marine in the Pacific during World War II. The one on this side, is the sands of Iwo Jima. Our unit was just being asked to go in and relieve the group that were there that were having such a tough time. But we were on Saipan at that time, and this is the sand of Saipan. That was where I spent uh, about uh, a little over a year. And 70 years later, many memories remain. We didn't have cameras, but I had a friend that was uh, worked for a general that he would fly over every now and then to Saipan and he, because he was on his staff, he would come and he took this picture of me while I was on Saipan. It's the only picture I have while, while we're on that island. So it means a lot to you to remember that. It does, remember that. to remember, hi, remember him and, and remember the occasion where he came. But we lived in tents like that. And even in a time of war, Elder Perry and his fellow soldiers found opportunities to do good. A highlight was building a small chapel on the island of Saipan. A photograph of the chapel hangs on his wall today. That's the group of Marines that uh, helped in the labor. We happened to be on top of the chapel putting on uh, shingles when 
everything in the, uh, all the ships in the harbor and every place else just went crazy. They were shooting off tracers all over. We thought we were being invaded. Word came up that the Japanese had surrendered and that's the way we found out that the war was over when we were on top of that little chapel. But those Marines would only attend one Sunday service in that chapel. Even though the war was over, they would soon find themselves in Japan as occupation troops. His faith, he says, helped sustain him during those difficult days. Many nights, with the light of a Coleman lantern, we studied the scriptures together. And with the war over, many experiences to help ease the suffering of the Japanese, including fixing up a Catholic orphanage abandoned during the war. We got them in that orphanage, and we held the first Christmas they'd ever enjoyed, I guess, on Christmas Day, got a Christmas tree. To this day, Elder Perry credits the faith of people at home who supported the soldiers during World War II. Through their effort and making the best materials that we had to use in service, and then their great prayers Sunday was a special time. You'd see them flocking to church on Sunday. Everyone was praying for the safety of the uh, men in service. Elder Perry says he is constantly praying for the men and women in the military today who are deployed around the world to protect freedom, knowing it is also a sacrifice for their families back at home. I would encourage them to have great faith in what their servicemen are doing for not only this country, for the world, and trust in the leadership of this country that they would do everything possible to protect them and give them experience that would be of great value to them throughout their lives. And they ought to listen, watch the letters that come home, and I guess now emails and the other events that we have that bring them to us, and start getting that feeling of how they feel about this great country and the opportunity to serve it and breed that into the next generation that they'll feel the same way that they're feeling now in making the sacrifice for this great country of ours. A highlight in Elder Perry's service as an apostle came in 1976 when he represented the LDS Church on the nation's Bicentennial Committee. We have a tremendous history. These people came from Europe, to the United States for freedom. They had been confined by a king having both power over the civil government and over the religious affairs of the people. The people did not like that. They wanted to be free to worship as they pleased. So when the opportunity came, they came to America. It only strengthened his belief that all Americans have a duty to protect freedom. That's what we have to preserve. That's our responsibility. And every generation in this great country of ours has been interested in preserving that for the next generation. Their great desire in life is offering something to their children and their grandchildren that would be permanent to preserve the rights of liberty and the pursuit of happiness. From voicing opinions in the public square to exercising the right to vote and always showing our patriotism. Freedom is not a spectator sport. A freedom is something we have to be involved with. And thank goodness we have a country that believes in that. And we have a sacred right to preserve that freedom that existed in this country since its foundation. And we should stand up and, and be an active part in preserving that. And when we have a celebration, we need to get out the flag and wave it. Stand with great pride as we place our hand over our hearts as a flag goes down the street. And let people see us for the feeling we have for this great land of the free. And with a lifetime of experience traveling around the world, both in the military and in his church service, Elder Perry says his feelings for freedom keep getting stronger. It's the only way to live. It's the way God built the people to have the agency that they need to grow and progress. And we ought to protect that with all that we have, with our thoughts, with our actions, yes, even going to battle for it. 
Sam Penrod for Deseret News National Edition. Very interesting. Thank you, Sam. Next, it's a disease that often robs children of their fathers in the prime of their life. But there's real hope of a breakthrough for Lou Gehrig's disease. See how one family is bringing together an army of people to help fight the battle.